Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, in this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at a different way of playing a solo. So this is a kind of more of a spacey way of doing it where you don't play as many notes. In fact, there's a lot of dead space, but uh, it creates a whole different type of mood. And so I'm going to show you how to play all of the notes that I played in the intro. In fact, this lesson is not split into two parts. This is all in this one video, so the entire lesson portion will be free. Um, one other thing to point out, I've got my tremolo or my whammy bar attached to the Stratocaster, which I don't normally have. Um, and I'm going to show you some different techniques for a whammy bar if you have one on your guitar. If you don't have one, if you're on an acoustic guitar even, you'll be able to play along with this lesson. So definitely follow along. Um, you'll be able to play all of the notes. You just won't get the, the tremolo or the vibrato effect. Um, one other thing to point out, the MP3 or the jam track is a custom made jam track just for this uh, lesson. So if you are a premium member, you're definitely going to want to download that. If you're not a premium member, check it out. Premium membership is incredibly affordable. And if you're interested in these types of lessons, I've got uh, just tons of them over at ActiveMelody.com that are you know, all in the roots, kind of blues, there's some country, there's some jazz, there's a little bit of everything for you. So uh, if you like this, you're going to love what you see over there. Uh, you'll also be able to download the tablature uh, for this lesson and have access to the on-screen tab viewer. So there's a lot of perks for premium members. But uh, if you're not and you just want to enjoy the lesson for free, uh, the video portion, please do so. All right, let's take a look. All right, so let's talk through settings real quick before we jump into the notes. Uh, I am playing through, uh, I just have a little bit of overdrive through my Blues Driver uh, BD2 pedal, which is made by Boss. I have about 10% of overdrive on that. And it just gives a little bit of a boost to the signal. The other thing that I have, which I don't normally have, is a, a, a delay pedal. And I'm using a TC Electronic flashback pedal. And that gives me the this effect. Now, it, just so you can see the difference, and by the way, you don't have to have this. This is not uh, critical at all. But here's the difference. There's with the pedal, and here's what it sounds like without. So you can see, you can still play the notes. And still get a nice effect, even without the delay on. It just gives you a little bit more, uh, fattens up the sound a little bit. So that's what I have. Now, as far as the settings on the pedal, um, if you're interested, uh, I will take a picture of it and put it up for a premium member. So if you want to know, I'll, I'm actually going to take a picture of it right now, or as soon as I finish this video, I'll put it up for premium members if you just want to know the exact settings that I'm using for this. Um, but uh, anyway, it's TC Electronic. It's a flashback pedal, and here's the... There's the delay. Okay, so the first thing that happens is this this bend. It almost sounds like a pedal steel, and you're bending up to a chord. The chord I'm playing is an E minor chord, and I'm barring with my pointer finger here on the seventh fret. I'm doing a full bar, and I'm putting my middle finger down on the uh, eighth fret for, uh, second string. My pinky goes down on the ninth fret third string. And my ring finger goes down on the 9th fret 4th string. And I'm playing strings 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And that's an E minor chord. But the way that I'm building into the chord is with the, the uh, tremolo here. And what I do is I go ahead and push it down. Let me get at an angle where you can watch this. I push it down, meaning towards the body of the guitar. And then I hit my chord with my pick. Watch. And I let off as I, I, right after I pick. So push it down, strum, and then let off. And you're not pulling it at all. You're just releasing the tension of it so that it goes back to its normal position. So it's just like that. Now when you're applying this, uh, this vibrato style, um, I, get, I have had questions um, from other people in the past where they want to know, are you pulling up? Are you pushing down? It's really a combination. If the note is here, you're bending below the note and above the note like this. So that's what you're trying to do. And it's very subtle. You can just, a little bit goes a long way with a, with a tremolo. If, you, if you're not careful, it's going to sound like an old lady in church, you know. So you've got to kind of watch it and keep control it. I just like to give it a little bit, just like that. It sounds almost like a tremolo pedal or, or a tremolo setting on, on an amp. Very nice. It's very subtle. I'm also grabbing it with these two fingers here. 
so that it frees up my hand to hold the pick. So I'm just kind of hanging on to it that way. That's just how I do it, but I just wanted to point those things out. Okay, so that's how we start this thing with that, with that E minor. And then I play this note. Okay. That note, sorry. So what I did there is I took my pinky off. I kept the E minor chord, took my pinky off, and played that third string. So it sounds like this. Now, another way you could do it, and I was going to teach it this way, was to just do a pull-off with, with my pinky like this. And not even pick the note. And it just depends on your amp settings, if you can do that or not. Just like that. Uh, but w when I was trying to record it in the intro, it just didn't seem loud enough, so I ended up picking it. But that's another way you could do it. Okay, so then the song changes to, uh, I should have pointed at this out at the beginning, the, the structure of this little song, if you will, um, is an E minor, a C, and an A. E minor, C, A, and it just keeps repeating. Very, um, you know, just sort of spacey and um, just sounds great. So, so you get the E minor, then it comes down to a C. Um, but the way that I played the C was I played a C sus chord, and a sus chord is kind of not a finished chord, so it leaves your ear kind of wanting for more. So here's what a sus chord sounds like. See how it's kind of a, a different twist on the C chord? It doesn't sound so so complete. It's it's missing uh, a, a step. And so the way that I make that chord, and any of these sus chords for that matter, is to go ahead and bar. I'm barring on the third fret here, all six strings, and I take my ring finger, put it down the fourth string, fifth fret. My pinky goes down on the third string, fifth fret, and I'm playing those strings five, four, three, two, and one. If I play the full chord, but that's how you'd play a full C sus. Now the way that I played it was I went. And for that, I'm playing string. So there's, you keep that down, and you play four, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Those are the string numbers. And as soon as I play them, you can see I grabbed the tremolo here, and I gave it just a slight little. I mean, I'm just barely moving it. See the amount of movement? Very subtle, it's not like this, it's just a little bit. So then the cool thing is when you go to the A, you can keep that same structure and slide everything down like this. You just take your bar off, so the nut here replaces your bar. Now you've got your middle finger, or your ring finger and your pinky on the second fret, but they're on the fourth and third string like they were. And you play those same notes, uh, or you pluck those same strings, four, two, three, four. So you have Now remember that if you're ever playing a song with a C chord in it, and here's how you can remember how to make this sus chord. When you're making a C chord, there's you know there's kind of really two main ways to make make it the way I think of it. You could do your full C bar chord, which would look like this, or you could play your your uh, chord shape like this. Well think about this, when you're making this shape for a C. You're just making your, you're basically taking uh, this where your pinky is barring those, and you're just uh, singling out strings four and three, so that you can make it like that. Now that's how you can always get to a C or, or a sus chord. So a D, for example, would look like this: a D sus. So you can hear how it just sounds different. It doesn't sound like the chord completes, but that gives you a spacey kind of sound. It sounds like it just keeps going and going and going. Your ear is wanting it to resolve, but it's not. So, okay, so let's back up. So from the beginning, we have this E minor. We build up to the chord, and then we pick that single note out. Then I come down and play the C, the C sus, rather. Now watch this. Now, now the next chord is just an E minor chord, and the way that I did it was, I I went at, since I was already in this position, I just left my ring finger down and I put my middle finger down here. Made it easy. Always try and eliminate steps. If you've got a finger that's down and your next chord requires that finger, try and keep it if you can. 
So I know that some of you probably make an E minor like this, but don't, just because it's easier to go like this. Um, okay, so then you get to the, your, your E minor chord, and then watch this. So what gives it that sound is strumming it, doing an upstroke and strumming it backwards from the from the one string all the way down to the six, like this. Another thing that gives it a, a nice effect is depending on where you're strumming, if you strum back here closer to the bridge, listen how bright it sounds. Really cool. So that's a, another little trick that you can remember if you ever want to just, if you're working with dynamics and you want something to punch a little higher than the other instead of picking it here pick it all the way back here and you get this real trebly bright tone okay so so after the uh, a sus i play the e minor and then now here's another difference when i play the e minor instead of giving the the vibrato like this down up down up down up so i kind of ch change the timing of it like this So it's it, it just a little subtle change, but thought I would point that out. All right, so let's back up and play it up to that point. So we have... See how the timing changed there? One, two, three, with a, with a uh, tremolo. Now watch this. sound so now we go to this it's really an E minor 6 chord so you're keeping your E minor down all I'm doing is adding my pinky on the second fret second string right there and I'm playing strings four, three, two, and then I add my pinky so it's four three and two of the E minor chord and then I play the second string again, this time adding my pinky. And I keep that same tempo. So, you can you can hear how just changing the the timing with with your tremolo uh, really gives it a different mood. And it uh, and the nice thing about that is you're in control of it. So if the band is playing in a different tempo or or whatever, you can easily adjust uh, using that. So make sure uh, as you play along with the jam track that that you really practice your timing and make sure you're getting the uh, you know you're 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 calling out a major difference between that timing and. Um, and when I'm doing that, one last little point is I'm just going down, down, down. I'm not bending it backwards or above the note. It's always just below the note. So if you look at it like this on a horizontal plane, it would be going below the note, below the note, below the note, and then coming back to meet the note. Okay, um, so then we get to the second part. And so for the second half, I came up and did this. This is more of a Dave Gilmore-inspired thing, but... Um, I've heard Pink Floyd, or I've heard him do that in Pink Floyd on a, you know, I can't, I couldn't even tell you the song, but I thought of him when I played this. He's really good with a whammy bar as well. So what I'm doing there is I'm, uh, since we're in the key of E, uh, I'm right now in the E minor pentatonic scale. So if you think about if the, the chord structure for this, it's, uh, you know, E minor, C, A, back to the E minor. Well, if you were playing a blues solo, you'd be in E minor pentatonic. So I came up here and played this lick. So it's a very bluesy lick, but it sounds different when you've got all the delay and you've got the tremolo to go with it. So I'm starting with the 12th fret first string, and, I'm, uh, and then I'm coming down here to the uh, 15th fret second string, and I'm bending this note to match this note. So listen. So this is the note here, and this is the note that you're trying to bend to. And you play them both at the same time. So when you do the downstroke, you're, you're strumming, uh, you're picking, rather, strings two and one, like this. 
So now you throw in one other element, and that's the whammy bar, so you do it like this. So it, it's an easy way to get a vibrato in a bend, which isn't easy to do. So if you're trying to do it manually, that's hard to do. That took me a whole summer, I think, to try and figure that one out. So to do with the, with the tremolo, it's a lot easier. Then I released the bend and played just those two. Now see, hear the clash, hear how it has this kind of dissonant thing. So for that, it's just the 15th fret and the 12th, 15th fret on the second string, 12th fret on the first string, and I'm just playing those two notes at the same time, giving it some vibrato with the, the uh, tremolo. Then I came down, and I have no idea where this came from, by the way. I, I honestly just, as I was listening to jam track, I just kind of started noodling around, and I came up with some of these chords. I can't even tell you what chord this is, but here's what I did, and I'll explain where it came from. I got my pointer finger on the second string, 12th fret. Then I got my ring finger on the fourth string. So we skipped the third string all, all together. Uh, the ring finger's on the fourth string, uh, 14th fret. And what I'm playing is strings four, three, which is an open note, two, and then the first string, which is also an open note. Now, where that may have come from, as I'm saying this out loud and thinking about it, the, you know the song, because uh, I had Pink Floyd, I guess, in my head, uh, and Shine On You Crazy Diamond starts with... And so maybe I had that in my head for for the chord structure. That's probably where it came from. Anyway, totally different notes, but uh, it's probably uh, in my mind where, where that structure came from. I said I'd tell you where this comes from. As I mentioned, this is the minor pentatonic scales. So it looks like for the key of E. So it looks like this. Pattern 1 looks like that. By the way, if you're not familiar with what I mean when I say Pattern 1, I have a whole blues lead course at ActiveMelody.com, so check that out if you haven't. Um, and I go through all the patterns and explain that. But anyway, when I played this, again, you're just fretting these two notes. I'm strumming strings 4, 3, 2, and 1. It has a kind of a weird sound, right? Now, uh, and I couldn't tell you what chord that is. The next thing I play, I also can't tell you what chord this is, but it sounds cool. As long as you know where it comes from, that's all that matters, because then you'll be able to at least replicate it. Um, if you're ever playing something in, obviously in this case, you'd have to be playing something in E, because you got these open strings. So the next thing that I played was this. And for for this, I've got my ring finger, or sorry, my middle finger on the 12th fret 3rd string my pointer finger on the 11th fret, 4th string, those two strings. Now I'm, in addition to those two strings, I'm also playing the open 2 and the open 1. So I'm playing strings 4, 3, 2, that's the open string, and the open 1. It sounds like that. Really cool. That plays over the A. And there, it's got a little bit of a, you can kind of tell it's got some 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 blues in there a little bit. Um, let me back up. I'll start from this first bend, and we'll play up to that point. So we have. Now, this last chord that I play, this is... Uh, Actually, I did this a couple lessons ago where I played, uh, there was a, it was EP094, I believe, if you want to, as a reference. But I call this the T-Bone Walker chord. But uh, then I played this chord. And I got this from Ry Cooter. So Ry, Ry Cooter, if you're not familiar, he's just awesome musician, guitar player, composer, just one of the best. And there's a song of his, or an album of his, I can't remember what it was called, but in, anyway... Um, Gosh, I wish I could remember that, but there was a song where he does this, where he's the song is in E or something. He's playing all the spacey stuff, and he comes in and does that. And just I just thought it sounded so it would fit with this well. So let me show you this chord. If you're familiar with the D shape in first position, which I'm sure you are, I'm making that same shape, but I'm making it up here so that my pointer finger is on the 11th fret, 5th string, my middle finger is on the 11th fret 3rd string, 
and my ring finger is on the 12th fret 4th string. That leaves my pinky to come down on the 12th fret 2nd string. So you can see I've just got this little box here. And it's a... The reason I call that the T-Bone Walker chord is if... Uh, and as I can, you, You'll see it in EP094 if you check it out. But if you're in the, playing in the key of E, for example, which we are... You can see how it starts to sound bluesy if you slide into it. So he, when T-Bone plays it, he'll play He's always sliding that chord around, but anyway, that's where that chord came from. It's, I, I don't know, Rykut or T-Bone, but, uh, you know, I thought it fit. So at least you can see how it plays off of the E chord. That's the important thing. You can see that my ring finger and my pinky are both rooted on the 12th fret, which also happens to be the root fret. So if you're playing E bar chord, it's here. If you're playing this chord, it's right here behind it. Okay, um, so then uh, we get to this chord. Now, the, uh, let me back up one more time, just as a reference. So we have. See, oh, hear how I built into that? Just like I did at the intro. Now, I came down and went, played this little lick. And for that, I started on, with my middle finger on the second fret third string, slid up to the fourth fret, back to the second fret. Then I took my ring finger, played the third fret second string, and then we're back to the fourth fret third string. Um, okay, and then the, the way that I ended it was I just went, and that's just open one, open two, and then I put my uh, middle finger down here on the third string, seventh fret. Gave it a little vibrato, and that's it. That's the entire piece. And then you just repeat. Obviously, now that you know all the notes and sort of where they come from, uh, what I hope you can do is get this, get the notes that I showed you down, but then let the jam track play and come up with your own compositions out of this. And try, this is where uh, I'm trying to, to, to push you out of, I know that most of what, most of the lessons I do are, are based um, in blues, and that's, that's what I like the best and know the best. But um, it's always good to get out of your comfort zone uh, because you, you can start to take blues and take it in different directions. And I think that makes it very interesting. So, so try to take that jam track and take some notes from the minor pentatonic scale, which um, you, I'm sure most of you know by now, and see what other little licks you can come up with. You know, just have fun with it. It takes, you know you've got this open one and open two string that are going to work. So those are two open strings that you can play with. So what else can you do other than... You could go... You can start to slide them around and just kind of kind of have fun with it. I, that's how you really learn and, and you can become a much better musician by just kind of jamming along and be able to grab your instrument and just play. It doesn't come naturally, but it does come with practice. And so uh, so hopefully that's where you, where this lesson goes to. It you know, it starts with some notes to give, get you started, and then you take it from there and you start adding your own little uh, parts to it. Okay, that's all we have this week. Make sure you download the Jam Track MP3. I've got it um, available. It's uh, EP098. Uh, on activemelody.com. Also, I've got the tablature and the on-screen tab viewer as well. So check those out if you haven't, um, and we'll see you next week.